You want to sit on the table with the big boys, but you get picked on because a benchtop mill is no real mill. Let me show you how I built this massive cabinet, which almost doubles the rate of the mill and plants it like a container ship. Let's go! Tomorrow I will build you a cabinet, I promise. After some welding and even more tungsten grinding, the base structure was cobbled together. The bolts sticking out represent the hole spacing on the machine base, so you can later fix the machine base to the tabletop. To spice things up, I wanted to emboss a logo into the concrete tabletop. Since I have only one chance to do this right, I hatched my bets and casted a test piece. I noticed two issues. The logo needs a lot of draft to release the letters and the top layer needs to be a lot smoother. The draft angle can be changed in Fusion 360 while extruding the letters and there is a slicer setting called ironing to fix the top layer. Here the hot nozzle extrudes a tiny amount of plastic while ironing the top surface. Keep in mind, you have to print your embossed logo mirrored. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> Since my workbench is slightly bowed, I cut these spacer strips to provide the form a flat surface. Caulking the inside corners will give you those nice chamfered edges. As Blondie Hex says, chamfers separate us from the animals. These nuts are temporarily tacked in place so the metal frame can rest on the four threaded rods. The black plastic bushings prevent the concrete from sticking to the threaded rods. With these threaded rods I level the whole structure, so I have uh, even spacing of 5 cm all around. And now it's time to pour some concrete. I am by far no concrete expert, but I've had my fair share of concrete castings over the years. The main goal is to keep the water amount to minimum, while still keeping the mixture somewhat fluid. Here I am adding a special additive for concrete. It's a PCE super plasticizer, which makes the concrete more fluid, self-leveling and gets rid of trapped air. I know, I know, the concrete looks way too wet, but in fact it has 20% less water in it than recommended. That's the magic of the plasticizer. Now I need to cut off the spot welds of these nuts and then we will carry the top on the frame. Oh. 
the logo got stuck in the concrete because somebody made the draft in the wrong direction. But I fixed this with some bondo and lots of sanding. After some more welding and grinding, it was time to install the drawers. For mounting the draw slides, I've cut the spacer blocks. They have a chamfer here, so they don't interfere with the weld. And in theory, the spacer block goes on here and on here. And the draw slide goes on top and is perfectly in place. Turns out you can't weld the draw slides everywhere. You have to use the mounting holes, otherwise you distort the bearing surface. It's not that flat, but for a benchtop mill surface, it's pretty okay. And since milling usually involves a lot of oil, sweat and tears, I sealed the concrete with some linseed oil. <laughs> 